about it at the, the end, we, and, and I'll speak for myself, but I think Chris will really appreciate your participation in, uh, in this workshop. And uh, that what makes, what makes an interesting workshop is all of you, not us. Uh, we want to spend just the last few minutes talking about this handout in your packet that says uh, ethical dilemmas and their impact on attorney mental health. Greenhouse Council at the top. It also uh, uh, it's a two pager that starts with strive for self awareness. Uh, just want to touch, you can read this, but uh, Chris and I just want to touch on these bullet points. The first one is. Oh, right, okay. Uh, before I do this, I received some guidance from outside counsel. <laughs> uh, let me start first before I go over this to ask you what are the things in the last three hours that you are taking away from this workshop? Before I give you things that I want you to take away, what are you taking away? Don't kill your lawyer. Don't kill your lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> you better not. I like that. that yeah, that's the highlight for me. What else? Perspective, yeah, yeah. Keep keep things in perspective. Know your yeah. options. Know your options. Or or if you don't, then just take a minute. Yeah. And and stop. Maybe, yes. That's a good one. Know your options and stop. Don't. It goes back to what I said before. You don't have to act right away. Take a breath. Just don't. Don't act. Don't do anything. I think you said that before. That's an option too. Don't do anything. Wait. Good. Okay. You have another difference between advocacy and making your own problem. Okay. Difference between advocacy and make personalizing. Because for her it became it became way too personal. She lost all objectivity. Because after well, all this right. is just a job. This is right. your identity can't be wrapped up into who you work for. Right. It is, in essence, a job. That's right. Your identity so should not be. you're wherever you go. It should be important to you. Obviously, you're all professionals. That should be something you strive for, to be a good uh, attorney for your, uh, for your clients, for your companies. But not taking it too far, where it is the only thing. And it's a question about some facts. Question about facts. Yes. On the Don Jeffries signed that memo. Yes. Why would the general counsel be signing a memo like that? He, wa uh, he wasn't anymore. I yeah, know he, he was obviously it. signed that memo at some time. He no, did, but he probably wasn't. Yeah, I don't know. I, I guess maybe he wasn't generally. And so was she protecting the company or was she protecting him? Him. Because his signature would have been on the memo that she read. Right. And the whole thing is cast in that way. And so maybe it's not about the company. Maybe it's about the guy who brought her where she was. Maybe. In the position that she was in. That's right. But regardless, why was he signing that memo? Good question. I think you always have to keep in mind that this is Hollywood. I mean, you know, <laughs> the thing that got me is the, the, the statement about the pay for itself. Unless we get the 100% right, right. Yeah. marginal tax rate, we're not going <laughs> to you know, make people be thinking that way. $400 million out the door and be even Stephen. I mean, this, right. that's the laws of math. That not <laughs> but, you know, but, I, but your point earlier was. Sometimes the extreme example can still yeah. be used to right. uh, sharpen the focus on the issue. Yeah. But but there you know maybe maybe but the answer to your comment is that that could be Hollywood. Right. The fact that he signed it. You yeah. know, the he signed it. He was a lawyer. He watched this whole thing go through. He knew what she was going through. Kind of sort of. I mean, there's two. There's another lawyer in this show. Yeah. He set yeah. Her up. And somebody in our group said he set her up. <laughs> Ooh, that was the discussion yeah. in our group. I wouldn't do that. Set her up. Any other takeaways? Look for help. What's that? Look for help. Look, Look for help. help. Yeah, don't go it alone. Absolutely. Nothing at every stage. The whole option to look for help, even after she started making mistakes, she could have stopped it. She right. always had other options. She did. And you'll see. Um, the second bullet down at the bottom page, it says, do what's harder when it's easier. I love that quote. There's always, even though something's hard, 
It's easier now than if you wait. Go ahead. It's just once you've made one bad decision, then the rest of them just mm -hmm. pile on. Mm -hmm. So you're better, like you said, to think or stop or get perspective, whatever it is, before right. you make the first bad choice. And then the last bullet point we have there sort of follows out of that. And this is especially important for you guys as people in in-house counsel. You have a unique opportunity um, to basically try to help create a healthy office culture. Um, think about what it must have been like in the general counsel department at U North to admit a mistake over anything, especially things of this magnitude. But look deeper, looking at it in our own practices, we're not all doing $3 billion litigation. Um, some of you may have things that big and that significant on your caseload. Mine's not quite at that scale, I know. Um, but the question is, how are mistakes dealt with? What kind of culture um, pervades the office in which you practice? Maybe you're solo, maybe there's only two or three of you, 